If you want to illustrate the bullwhip effect, you need to look at the inventory or the order levels of all the parts of your supply chain. So here we have assumed that there are four parts to our supply chain, the factory, the distributor, the wholesaler, and the retailer. And here we have data over time. Let's assume that this data represents inventory levels. So the retailer, who works most closely with the customer, knows exactly how much the customer is going to buy because they're in close communication. So the retailer, their inventory levels are pretty stable. You can see here that we start with five, we go up to seven, and then we go back down to five. Now the wholesaler, distributor, and factory are not in close communication with the customer. So they're having to make predictions as to how much they need to order, how much inventory they need to have on hand for orders that come into them. And so because they are further away from the customer, there is greater variability in their orders and in their inventory. So if this is the inventory levels for the four parts of our supply chain, we can see the bullwhip effect by simply plotting the four parts of our supply chain. So we'll highlight these four columns and we'll go to insert and we'll create a column chart. On the column chart, you can see that on the horizontal, we have time. So here we have it in weeks. And the gold represents the retailer. So notice it's fairly stable. It goes from five to seven and back down to five. The bullwhip effect is illustrated by the fact that the wholesaler starts to increase their inventory levels in anticipation of higher orders, which means the distributor is now increasing their inventory levels, and then the factory starts increasing their inventory levels. So we see this kind of ripple effect. This is the bullwhip effect. The fact that variability increases the further you are away from the customer. Now what happens is the factory, the distributor, the wholesaler, they start to have too much inventory on hand. The orders that are coming in to them don't match the amount of inventory they have. They just have too much inventory. So when they place future orders, they're going to ask for less, and so their inventory levels are going to start to fall. Well, we see the factory fall, the distributor, the wholesaler fall as well, but then they have not enough inventory to meet the orders that are coming in. And so they start to see back orders, not have enough, and then they start to place greater orders and increase their inventory levels. So we see this great variability in the amount of inventory and the amount of orders that they have on hand. The further away you are from the customer, the more variability that exists. The bullwhip effect can be illustrated with these vertical columns. Notice that this graph shows the inventory levels for all parts of the supply chain. You could make a similar graph that showed all the parts of the supply chain, but instead showed order levels instead of inventory. We can also see the bullwhip effect if instead of doing a column chart, we insert a line graph. Notice again, time is on the horizontal and you can see the very little variation for the retailer and then you can see the variability for the other parts of the supply chain.